Hello and welcome to Options in Plain English Advanced Edition. Today we're going to talk about winged creatures, condors, and butterflies. But before we do that, we're going to talk about vertical spreads. I'm, sh I'm sure you are familiar with vertical spreads such as long, the long call spread, the short call spread, the long put spread, and the short put spread. So you can see here, the long call spread and the short put spreads are bullish spreads and the short call spread and the long put spread are both bearish spreads. So if we start looking at these graphs, at these risk profiles, we notice that they are somewhat similar. The long call spread is kind of similar to the short put spread and the short call spread is kind of similar to the long put spread. So let's try to analyze these types of spreads. To start with, let's think about put call parity. Put call parity states that, or at least a reduced version, we're not going to talk about the, uh, the full on um, put call parity formula, but a reduced version says that the underlying could be replaced with a long call and a short put. So that if we solve for the call, the call would be equal to a long stock and a long put. So wherever you have a call, you can replace it with a long underlying and a long put, and you're going to have the exact same thing, an equivalent position. So let's let's take a, a long call spread and start analyzing and let's start analyzing it and see where, where that takes us. As you know, the long call spread is made up of being long a call at a low strike right here and being short a call at a higher strike right here. And if you remember your um, your long call spread um, risk profile, you are going to be making max profit when the price ends up higher than the than the um, than the short call. At that point, you're going to maximize the profit, and your your max profit is going to be equal to the difference in strikes. So KS minus KL here minus whatever it is you paid for when you put it on. So minus the cost of the call spread, which is going to be a, uh, a debit at the beginning. So if we continue analyzing here, we're going to replace the uh, call with the uh, underlying and long put that we figure out here. So a long call spread, instead of it being a long call, we're going to have long underlying and long put at the low strike. And then we're going to have a short position, so a minus, minus the underlying and the put at the higher strike. So if we continue developing the formula, we're going to have long underlying, long put at the low strike, short underlying, and short put at the high strike. As you can see here, these two underlines offset each other. So we don't need to consider them anymore. And we end up with a formula saying that the long call spread is going to be equal to being long the put at the low strike and then being short the put at a higher strike. But if we take a look at this, which strategy or which structure already has this? Well, the structure that already has this is the short put spread. So the long call spread and the short put spreads are exactly the same. They are synthetically the same position. So this might come as a surprise to some traders because you, they can think, okay, so for a long call spread, I need to buy something and then I hope that the value expands so that later on I can, I can sell it for a higher price. Whereas for a short put spread, I have a... Um, I, I receive a credit when I put it on and then I hope that it stays out of the way so it stays out of the money both of them so that I can close it for as close to zero as possible so you for the long call spread you buy something hoping it expands and for the put spread for the short put spread you sell something hoping that you can either let expire uh, worthless or buy it for a very low price 
Well, yes, this one's put on for a debit, this one's put on for a credit, but they are exactly the same position. So when you are using the same strikes, you have the exact same position with a long call spread and a short put spread. And the same thing is, is happening with uh, the short call spread and the long put spread. If you use the same strikes, you have the exact same position. So for example, let's, let's do a quick example. If you have a long call spread and the, the, the strike difference is five, and you put it on for $2, then the maximum value that it can go to is five. So you can make $3. So you put it on for two, it goes to five, you make three. For the short put spread, the exact same position would be selling a credit of three and then hoping for it to go uh, completely out of the money so that you can let it expire worthless or, or close it for zero. In, in which case you're going to have a credit, an initial credit of three, which is your max profit. And, and uh, this would be the exact same thing that we have here with the long call spread. They're equivalent, but this one is put on for credit and then you have to buy it back to close it. And the long call spread, it's, it's put on for a debit and then you have to sell it for a profit at a higher price. So here we have our first discovery, which is that the long call spread is equal to the short put spread and the short call spread is equal to the long put spread. So we're going to be using this just in a few minutes and we're going to use it to figure out all the types of condors and butterflies that, that you know and use. And we need to, we, we, we're going to analyze those and we're going to figure out whether those are different strategies or they're the same strategy but being being um, structured in a slightly different way. So if we continue here, let's start with condors. So we're going to keep the formula here so that we can reference it when we need to. An iron condor, so the, the one that pretty much everybody knows, is basically when the price is here, you sell an out of the money put spread and you sell an out of the money call spread. So this is a short put spread and a short call spread. But if you think about it, a short call spread is equal to a long put spread. So what if we replace this short call spread with a long put spread at the same strikes? Well, if we do that, we're going to have a long put condor which is the exact same position, but it's made up of only puts, no calls. The iron condor, it's a short put spread and a short call spread. So it uses both puts and calls. And a long put condor is a long put spread and a short put spread. The short put spread is going to be put on uh, at the lower strikes than the, than the uh, long put spread, which is going to be put on at higher strikes. So as you can see here, we have the exact same position. So as you can see here, we have the exact same position, but now we have something that's made up of only puts. This is combined. And now what if we replace the short put spread with a long call spread. So instead of a short put spread, we, uh, we use here a uh, long call spread. Then we have a long call condor. So we have a long call spread and then a short call spread at a higher strike. So this position is exactly the same as the iron condor. And this one is the same as the, as the long put condor. So the long put condor and the long call condor are also the same. So all three of these positions are exactly the same. But what's the difference? The difference is this one's put on for a credit and you hope it expires worthless. So exactly out of the money, which would be in this range in between both uh, spreads. And then you have this one, which is the, the, uh, the long put condor, which is put on for a debit. And you hope 
that it stays in the range because if it stays in the range, in this range between the uh, long and the short put spreads, then this one's gonna end up out of the money, but this one's gonna be fully in the money, so you're gonna be max, you're gonna make, make max profit here. Same with the long call condor. You wanna be uh, fully in the money for this long call spread, so beyond the short leg of the call spread, but be but before you start get being hit by um, by the uh, short call spread that you have here. So what would be the max profit here? So it would be the um, the the difference in strikes here minus whatever it is that you paid for at the beginning when you put it on. Same here. So it, it's this put spread. The long put spread is the one that's going to be maximized. So the 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 difference in strikes here minus whatever it is you paid for at the beginning. And this one would be the credit that you got here and here, these two put together. And assuming that you don't have to close it because it's out of the money, then that would be your max profit, the credit that you got. But these are the same numbers. So these are the, these are, um, uh, traders call them synthetically equivalent position. It's the exact same position. Why would you use one instead of the other one? Well, maybe you have a requirement that you have to use only only puts or uh, the call is not trading. So, so you have to only use puts to put it on or maybe liquidity is better for the long call condor. So several other factors could influence your decision to use one instead of the other but it's important for you to know that these are the same positions okay so which ones which one would i use which which one would i norm, normally use i'm not gonna lie most of them i'm talking about 99 percent of the time i use iron condors why because out of the money options usually have better liquidity you can easily get in and out not a lot of slippage and because of this they are usually more efficient for the trades that, the, that we put on if we, if, we, if you go for a uh, put condor or a, or a call condor that at that point you're going to have to to uh, trade um, in the money calls here and in the money puts here so those ones usually when an option is in the money has it usually has worse liquidity than the um than their uh uh out of the money counterpart so because of this most traders myself included uh tend to use iron condors more also um in terms of um conceptually it's easier to think of something that you're selling at the beginning and hoping it expires uh worthless instead of buying something for a certain amount and and waiting for it to expand and hoping for, hoping it expands um, to to a point where you make max profit or whatever profit target that you have now let's take a look now at butterflies a butterfly an iron butterfly is the same thing as an iron condor but now the uh, the short portion of the put and the call are at the same strike but if you start analyzing it it's the same thing short put spread here short call spread here okay if we uh, replace the, this short call spread with a long put spread then we have a long put butterfly okay where it's all made up of it, it's all made of puts and you have the long here actually let's start the other way around the long here and then two short ones here and then another long one here okay so even though i'm all, i'm only using puts this is the exact same position but again like the condor when compared to the iron condor this is going to be put on for a debit and you are hoping for max profit when when it pins your short strikes because you're going to be making this amount for because of this long put spread you're going to be making this 
strike difference minus whatever it is you paid uh, initially when you put it on. Now the same thing if we uh, replace now the put spread, the short put spread with a long call spread, we're going to have a call butterfly. Same position, all with calls, same thing. One long call here, two short calls here, and one long call here. Okay, one, two, one. Same risk profile, same strategy. Again, Iron Butterfly um, has all pretty much. If you if you if you pin it perfectly, you're going to have to be right at the money with the with your shorts, and then your longs are going to be uh, out of the money. With the long call butterfly, for example, you're going to have the uh, call. If you if it's if the if the price is right here, this one's going to be in the money. So there might be a wide bid ass spread uh, here on this leg. This one's going to be fine because it's the same one as this one. And same with the long put butterfly. This put is going to be in the money. So liquidity concerns should uh, dictate which position you put on. But you should know that these three positions are the same position. Now, now that you have this tool, knowing that a long call spread is the exact same as a short put spread and the short call spread is the same as the long put spread. Now, you can you can start applying this knowledge to a lot of the positions that you already that you already have. So for example, I'm not going to do it here, but you can do it on your own. If you have a broken wing butterfly where for example, you have this one here with calls and then you move this um, call a little bit further so that you have a wider spread here and that you that you can make uh, more profit then what you're gonna get is if you do the same thing with the iron butterfly then you're gonna have you're gonna create a, a, the exact same position only made up of puts and calls and same with the long put butterfly if you have this put this one to one structure and then you move the um the uh the p1 in this case you move it a little bit lower in strike you're going to be getting more credit because you're not going to have to pay so much for it it's going to be further out of the money and your profit is going to increase well you can achieve the exact same thing by using an arm butterfly and moving this put over here so any position that you can think of that contains uh, spreads, vertical spreads, are going, they're going to be interchangeable. And knowing this is going to make you a much better trader. Good traders know this by heart and they're able to look at these configurations and know that they're equivalent. Um, and, and having this information at your fingertips is going to make you definitely a better trader, one that's more informed and one that's going to be able to, to look at a position and start dissecting it and looking at it from different perspectives to analyze and identify where your risks for your position are. Now let's go to the platform and see if we can take a look at an example so that you can, um, in real life with real data, see what we just talked about. So now we're going to analyze a real life example and we're going to go to the uh, trading platform and we're going to take a look at Alphabet, which is uh, the uh, Google's parent company. So the ticker symbol is like Google without the E at the end, G-O-O-G-L. It's currently trading at 1270. So what we're going to do here is we're going to open up this expiration with 22 days to go and we're going to be selling an iron butterfly and then we're going to be buying a put butterfly and then we're going to buy the called butterfly with all the same strikes and we're going to see if they're the same or not okay we're going to do this for real and in the platform so let's open up uh, may 2020 the may 2020 expiration and we have the um, add the money so what we're going to do is we're going to sell the put and the call at the money, sell the put, sell the call, 
and now we're going to buy the wings. So we go $100. Let's make it $100 wide. So we're going to be selling the 1270 call and put, and then we're going to buy the 1170 put right here. And we're going to buy the 1370 call. So right here. So we're going to analyze this trade and you can see it called a uh, an iron condor but in reality it's, a, it's an iron butterfly because it has the short strikes are the same for the put and the call so we have the uh, short the 1270 put short, short the 1270 call long the 1370 call and long the 1170 put this is a uh, like i said an iron butterfly we're going to be getting a credit of 72 dollars for it and this is the max profit and uh well we and we can lose money of course and the most we could lose is 100 minus because this is the the width 100 minus 72 now don't forget each one of these contracts is covering 100 shares of google so this is quite a big quite a big position okay so i'm going to simulate it here okay and let's put it aside for for a little bit let's this is the uh, iron butterfly now we're going to create the uh put butterfly okay so now let's delete this trade and let's do it again so with only puts we're going to buy the 1370 we'll sell two of the 1270 and then we're going to buy one of the 1170 right here okay so this is called a butterfly right here with puts and I'm it's a one pl a plus one minus two plus one so it's uh, one long the 1170 put short two of the 1270 puts and long one of the 1370 puts and this is going to be a debit we're gonna have to pay for it $27 and it could go to a hundred because the if you um, if it if it expires right at the money then the um the long put spread that we have here the uh 1370 1270 is going to um is going to be at max profit at max value okay and the uh short put spread is not going to kick in so we're going to be at max profit right here so max profit is is uh, 100 minus this so we're going to send this to analyze okay and let's let's uh, put aside for a while and let's do the same one but for calls so now we're going to buy the 1170 call this now we're going to do the same butterfly but with calls so we'll buy this one one time and then we sell two of the 1270 okay one two and then we buy one of the 1370 to complete the butterfly so this is a symmetrical butterfly okay butterfly all with calls long the 1170 short two of the 1270 long the 1370 for 27 dollar debit so we're going to pay for this okay so let's send it to analyze okay so now let's analyze these trades okay so if you look at the iron condor first let's open these up so that they're uh, picking up the current price at all times so if you look at the iron condor here you got a um, tw uh, 72 dollar credit okay and the max profit is going to be at the point where the uh, the short where, where the price at expiration pins the um the short strikes so right here so the max profit if you if you look at this at this portion you can see that the max profit is going to be seven thousand and well basically seven thousand two hundred and twenty dollars okay this is going to be the max profit and the max loss is going to be two thousand seven hundred and eighty which is 100 minus 70 to 20 multiplied by 100 okay now let's take a look at the uh put butterfly now the put butterfly now we're looking at the put butterfly the profit is the max profit is going to be 72 20 70 i can't really 
pin it, but basically it's going to be 100 minus 2755, which is going to be 7245. So 7245 and the max loss is going to be what you paid for it, $2,775 right here. Okay. Now, if you look at the put at the, at the call butterfly, it's the same thing is going to, if you pin the, the short strikes, then you're going to have a value of 7220 in this case, which is very close to this. Um, and the max loss is going to be 2775, which is what you paid for it. Now take a look here at the pricing. Okay. To begin with, put butterfly, call butterfly, priced exactly the same. You pay the exact same price. It pins right at the same price. You have the same max profit and the same max loss. These are the same trade. Now the iron version of this, the iron butterfly, is the exact same thing, but but starting with starting out with a credit instead of a debit. So instead of paying twenty seven, you're gonna make seventy three or seventy two thirty, and you're gonna hope that it expires worthless. So when would it expire worthless? When you pin the short strikes. So right here, okay? Which is the exact same point of max profit for the put butterfly, call butterfly. So if you take a look here, it's easy to see that the iron butterfly, the put butterfly, and the call butterfly are the exact same trade. Now, Sometimes what you would get is traders saying, oh, you know, uh, I'm going to put on an iron butterfly because implied volatility is higher. And I only buy butterflies when implied volatility is low, but I sell iron butterflies if implied volatility is high. Nonsense. These three trades are the exact same trade. So whatever circumstances you are looking for to put on one instead of the others, apply to all three of them okay these are the exact same same um position the exact same strategy now again why would you put um what, what would you put on this strategy instead of this one or this one maybe liquidity maybe um i want to have both calls and puts now what would you pick a butterfly instead of a, a of an iron condor well, maybe maybe you want to stick with uh, puts only or with calls only, or you already have a portion of this spread you want to leg into a butterfly. So if you if you take a look at, for example, the difference here would be, for example, um, an iron butterfly is going to use. If we go back here, is going to use these ones right at the money. Those are not the problem, but is going an iron butterfly is going to use. The long portion is going to be at, out of the money and the uh, the uh, call side is going to also be out of the money. But the put butterfly is going to use the long portion, the long leg, one of the long legs. is going to be this one right here. And this is going to be uh, uh, the 1370, which is trading right now at uh, 112.50 by 115.60. So the bid ask spread is just about three dollars whereas if you were to use the iron butterfly you would go here and the bid as spread is as you can see here one dollar and ten cents so three dollars one dollar so this is like i said out of the money options usually have better liquidity you can see it right here in real life with real data same with the um Put portion in this case if if you pick if you use an iron butterfly then you're going to be using these ones but if you use a call butterfly then you're going to have to use this one okay and when you buy this one you're going to have 119.60 by 122.90 so the spread is three dollars and thirty cents compared to a spread of 20 21 40 so one dollar and forty cents so right here you have a spread of a oh, bid ask spread of three dollars roughly and one dollar one and a half so right here you can you can see that it makes sense to stick with 
uh, out of the money options for the most part. So this is the reason why I would favor the arm butterfly over the call or the put butterflies. But some other circumstances might dictate uh, which one you pick. So in my case, I would always favor the arm butterfly. But some other reasons might dictate uh, uh, why you pick a call butterfly or a put butterfly. Those reasons are going to be different than PNL because in terms of PNL, these three strategies are exactly the same. And the same thing applies to the condors, iron condor, put condor, and call condor. So uh, now you know that all of these condors and all of these butterflies are exactly the same. And if you start breaking wings and adjusting, etc., you just adjust the uh, corresponding version of the uh, iron version, and um, and you'd be you'd be in a good position, uh, knowing that you have the exact same position for both. Well, I hope this lesson was uh, interesting, and and that now you have. A different set of tools now you, you now you know that uh, a uh, long call spread is the same as a short put spread and a long put spread is the same as a short call spread and uh, with this information you can you can analyze uh, a whole variety of of uh, positions and applying applying this you'd be able to look at the synthetic um, positions or equivalent positions and you'll be able to uh, put on either the uh, all calls or all puts version of these of these uh, strategies or the or the uh, what, what's called the iron uh, versions of them which is uh, combining calls and puts thank you very much for your attention and goodbye